and verse 13 second corinthians 4 13 paul is talking about his ministry and uh, all that he goes through in ministry and he interjects that with a statement in verse 13 second corinthians 4 13 he says and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written i believed and therefore i spoke we also believe and therefore speak paul is uh, just quoting or looking back at an old testament scripture that's really psalm 116 verse 10 and he says you know we people living right now his time we carry the same spirit of faith just like people way back then in the book of psalms we have the same spirit of faith and what is this spirit of faith he says the spirit of faith is this that we have believed therefore we have spoken we have believed something and therefore we have expressed it in our words and this is a very important truth in scripture both in the old testament and the new testament that your your believing must be expressed through your speaking amen your believing must be expressed through your speaking he says we carry the same spirit of faith as those people in the old testament even as it is written I believe therefore I spoke he says we also believe and therefore we speak what we believe must be spoken you believe the gospel speak the gospel you believe God's word speak God's word you believe God is Jehovah Jireh speak and say God is Jehovah Jireh you believe God is your healer speak and say God is your healer we have believed therefore we speak our speaking must align itself to our believing amen I think that's a problem with many of us. We believe something, but our speaking doesn't always align to what we believe. And so there's a disconnect. And therefore, it actually short circuits the power of God from working in our lives. Jesus said it like this. He said, if you believe, then you will say to the mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it will remove and nothing will be impossible to you. So our, 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 we have faith, it must be spoken, we must express it through our words. Amen? So that's what we do Sunday mornings, we stand up to our feet as we make a declaration. We are going to speak what we believe. We have believed, therefore we speak. Smith Wigglesworth said this, he said, I'm not moved by what I see, I'm not moved by what I feel, I'm moved only by what I believe. Let's put our hands up, Bibles up together, say this with me, this is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender, in Jesus' name, amen. Could you remain standing with me, please? This morning we are honored to have a present Joe's with us. He's our own evangelist. He's part, he graduated from our Bible college a couple of years ago. And now he travels around the country. If you hardly get to see him in Bangalore, he travels around the country and preaching big crusades and uh, seeing people saved and healed and delivered. And uh, so it's our honor, it's a joy to have Prashant with us. He's a young man, but full of God. Amen? Good. We're so happy to have him with us. He's going to be ministering to us. Let's put our hands together and welcome him once again. Good morning, church. Please be seated. Thank you. 
I praise God for this wonderful time that God has given me once again to stand in front of you all and to preach from the Word of God. I thank Pastor for giving me this privilege. Um, I, I was very happy when I got this invitation <laughs> for the second time. Uh, uh, I believe that t- today God is going to do something great in this place. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, recently I was in uh, Kerala, then to, uh, I went to Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, and we had a good time of ministry. From there we went to uh, Jagdalpur uh, in uh, North India, uh, a place called Gidam, where uh, you know, a lot of uh, Nexel area, Nexelites area. Uh, and we had a good time ministering there. About 5,000, 6,000 people gathered there for the crusade, and we had four days crusade. and. Uh, 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 the main miracle is like BJP leaders had come for the meetings and uh, they said like uh, Jesus is the true living God. Amen. I was very happy to hear from them and uh, uh, they, they, they asked me to pray for them and prayed for them. And uh, we saw miracles happening like uh, they brought a small baby, one small baby girl. Uh, it was something like she got jaundice and uh, there was no life in her. It was like uh, no breath, no breath. And uh, they brought with tears, the father, mother, with, with very worried. They brought on the second day of the meeting in my hand. When I looked at her, I felt very bad. I was feeling very uh, sad and pain. But immediately the Holy Spirit said to me, smile at the baby. I don't know, it was like very unusual. Before I went for the meeting, I asked pastor to pray for me. And pastor said, Prashan, uh, God is going to do something unusual. That word really touched me. I believed God is going to do something unusual. Amen? The same God of that day is the God of here. Amen? So I believed in God and I was praying and uh, uh, I just started smiling at the baby. Miracle, the baby opened her eyes, she, she started smiling. <laughs> I mean, uh, laughing. God did a miracle. I mean, uh, and a uh, lot of miracles. I saw uh, people having short, short hand, one hand is short, one hand is long. It started growing in front of our eyes. Legs started growing. Miracles. That's, that's, our, that's what our God is. It does natural in, in, into supernatural. Amen? It does impossible into possible. And I believe the same God that he did, did in Jagdalpur is going to do in this place. Amen? And uh, I was praying, the Holy Spirit said to me, I, I felt in my spirit like uh, to pray for the sick today and uh, before the end of the service uh, as I'm preaching, I'm not going to pray for you, but in, in, in between the preaching, God is going to heal the people. Amen. I cleanly, I, I uh, you know, really experience, I, I, I come to know that God is going to heal many broken hearted because we know our God and we're going to become strong and do great exploit. Amen. Uh, God gave me a wonderful message. God gave me a wonderful word uh, to preach for the church. I was praying, Lord, give me a good word. Uh, give me a word to uh, share, share with the people. And uh, God gave me a good word and I love to share with you. Let's open our Bible to Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Daniel 11.32, it says like this, And such as too wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flat trees, but the people that know their God shall be strong and will do great exploit. Amen? Amen? Okay, the word, uh, second stance again, I, I allow to read it, it says like this, But the people that know their God shall be strong and will do great exploit. Amen. See, the very, very powerful word that God has given uh, to the church, that is the people that know their God shall be strong and will do great exploit. Amen. The first thing is, we must know who is our God is. Second thing, we are going to become strong. And third thing, we'll do great exploit. Very simple. If you don't know your God, you are not strong. If you are not strong, you will, do, you will not do great exploit. Very simple. If you know your God, you are strong and you will do great exploit. And I believe today, for mo- most of the people, the Lord is telling that if you know your God, you are going to become strong and you are going to do great exploit. 
Amen. How do we know God? My, uh, you know, most of the time, uh, as I was uh, traveling, uh, many people have asked me, how do I know God, brother? How do I know the Holy Spirit? How do I know the presence of God? How do I know um, the, you know, the, the God speaking to me, the voice of God? How do I recognize it? You know, just kind of questions they were asking. E even today, many people in the world, they're asking, who is a God? I want to know him, know him. They, you know, they're going here and there in search of God to, to know him. And many people have asked this kind of questions. Who will lead me from darkness to light? Who will lead me from uh, untruth to the truth? And who will lead me from death to life? Just kind of questions. Many people ask you, I want to know God. I want to know God. But by the grace of God, you and I can say, we know who the true and living God is. Amen. And his name is Jesus. And we know that Jesus is a true and the living God is, is not a dead God. It's a live God. Amen. And it's not only, you know, most of the time we, we Christian, we say that, you know, I know my God and uh, I know Jesus. I became Christian for past 20 years. I'm a Christian. I'm going to church. I'm praying. I'm reading Bible. But most of the time we limit our God. We put our God in a small box and we try to limit him. We will say, Lord, this is God. That, that, that's it. You know, we limit him. But we cannot limit our God because God is not a limited God. It's an unlimited God. Amen. Amen. It's not just a you know, small God. I mean, as I was speaking in Jagadpur, uh, I wanted to make people understand. So I said, God is not a small God. It's a big God. It's a Bada God. How many of you believe? Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Okay. See, God is a big God and we have to know him. We have to know him every day. And uh, if I go to Bible college and if I study there and I do, I do PhD or some degree courses and all theological studying, 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 I will not know much about God. Something here and there I know only about God. But if I want to know him and, you know, I have to have a... An, daily exercise and I want to know him to seek his face because it's not a small it's a big God amen so how do we know God this is a question many people are asking how do we know God how do we know him how do we understand him very simple very simple uh, to know God uh, I got some three points of knowing God there are different definitions of knowing God but I got some three points what like God revealed it to me and very simple one very simple first thing to know God is through prayer amen amen so are you ready to catch the word Yes, you know, I love Pastor Steve, uh, Stephen Benny. Uh, I was studying in All People's Church Bible College and uh, many pastors have taught me and because of their input, this is output coming. <laughs> they have really blessed us. And whenever Pastor Stephen Benny comes to our class, uh, first thing he, he, he says to us is, are you ready? He asks he ask this question, are you ready? Now we say, yes. You know, it's like ready to catch the ball. <laughs> so I have seen cricket when somebody is playing cricket, ball is up in the air and they're ready to catch the ball. People will shout, come on, come on, Dhoni, you know, you watch, catch, catch, catch. But they want concentration on other, other people, they will concentration on the ball. When the ball comes down, they, they will catch it. See, for example, the ball is coming up in the air, it's up in the air, and people are ready to catch, you know, fielders are ready to catch, ball is coming, and uh, suddenly he missed, he dropped the ball. How his reaction will be? Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, see, ball is up in the air, and if he has caught the ball, how his reaction will be? Yes, I got it, you know. They will have much joy, they hug each other, clap hands, you know. Uh, same way, you know, God is giving you the word, I mean, uh, receive it. Are you ready to catch? Yes. Okay, how do we know God? Through, first thing is through prayer, we know, to God, we know God. Second, we know God is through the word, the Bible. You read Bible, you see the people's experience, Abraham's experience, Isaac's expe experience, Jacob's experience, and different people's experience. We come to know God through them. And, uh, and the third point, very simple and very easy, and that is through experience we know God. Amen? Amen? Through experience we know God. For example, there's a bottle, okay? Uh, Kingfisher. <laughs> it's a bottle here. And um, imagine there is honey in this honey. Okay? And if, if I write outside, you know, salt, if I write salt, and will not stop coming. 
and will not read and come this is honey yeah? and will taste and come the same way the lord is telling you now we have to taste the love of god know him know him through experience if you ask, if you ask me i'll tell i knew god through experience in different situation i came to know who my god is when i was in sickness when i went through jaundice and uh, when i was having kind of a severe bad ache uh, head pain i didn't have money to go to uh, hospital i was going through sickness i understood one thing my god is jehovah rafa is the healer amen and when i went through a financial uh, you know uh, what do we call it uh, financial uh, suffering and pain and we didn't have money to pay, pay the fees or pay the rent we have went through a lot of financial struggle i understood one thing my god is not only rafa jehovah the healer his name is jehovah the jaira is my provider Amen. So in different situation I came to know my God. Who is my God is. And when I went through uh, all failure in mathematics, sonne. <laughs> you know, in everything has to get sonne. Means a failure. Everything failure, failure, failure. If I go, if I do this job, that is failure. If I do that job, that is failure. If I go there, that is failure. Back failure. Every side. If I see failure, 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 I came to understand one thing. My God is not a God of failure. It's a victorious God. I know my God is not only Jehovah Rapha the healer, Jehovah Jireh the provider, is God Jehovah Nisi, my victory banner. How many of you believe God is a victory banner for you? Amen. You might be going through failures in every situation. Whatever job, whatever business you do, you see failure is happening. But today, the Lord, I feel in my spirit very clearly, the Lord is telling from today, you are going to know who is your God is. And if you know that your God is a victorious God, and you are going to see victory happening, success happening. Amen. 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 It's a victorious God. I understood my God is not a failure because my Bible says, Jesus said, uh, you have problems in the world, but be of good courage. I have overcome the world. Amen. If Jesus is the overcomer, if Jesus is a winner man, and I am on the winning side, I will have winning. Amen. Amen. So today, most of you are going through failure. Believe that your God is a victorious God. I was happy when pastor was speaking that word now like uh, declaration before that he was uh, speaking from the word uh, you know speak uh, if you believe speak speak that you are a victorious people it's going to happen to the, today for us a man every failure god is going to take it away no god through different situation experience sickness is jawar for the healer when you're going to struggling of financial or some other thing you need a book cloth i mean understand is a provider when you are going through i mean um, um, failure is nisi the victory of victorious god when i'm going through you know there is no peace within me discouragement disappointment understand is jehovah shalom is my peace is prince of peace amen it's a different situation i come to know who is my god is and now for the new testament believers i would like to tell you one sweet you know powerful thing my god is not only rafa jehovah the healer or jehovah jaira the provider or the jehovah nisi the you know victorious god one who is eyes blazing like a fire one who is having double edged sword in his right hand one who is uh, you know having uh, i mean double edged sword coming out of his mouth god is holy his arm and face is burning like a sun such a great and powerful god who created the heavens and the earth such a big god is our father Amen. I don't know how we see a reaction, but when I say He is my Father, I feel very happy because He is my Father. My fleshly dad, he has he, he has expired. He, he passed away. But I know one thing: there is a dad for me now. He will never die. Though I die, he will never die. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. So you must you must be strong. See, there are a lot of things happening in the world. Like you know, recently we came to know tsunami in Japan, and lot of things was for man the sign of Jesus coming. Jesus is coming very soon. A lot of signs are happening. A lot of things are happening. When just things are happening, most of the time in in our Christian faith, in our Christian life, we also go through some time from type of fear. We think, oh, will it happen to us? Kind of. you know recently swine flu came people were feared you know it might affect us you know this kind of fear comes upon like more of most of the people but today if you know who is your god is you are going to become strong amen 
how do we know god a third point i said through experience i want to talk about experience uh, not only from my experience i want to talk about uh, uh, experience from the bible uh, there are lot of people who have experienced god in different way new god through experience i would like to tell about one person in the bible we call him as a father of faith and uh, we know the history says like this he is a uh, sculptor he is a man who makes idols and sell idols he's kind of that guy and uh, he don't know god and he has not heard the voice of god nothing but immediately one voice is coming to him and telling you know you know go to the place i'm showing you the voice came as he heard the voice he, he started keeping his foot friend started moving now we ask him you don't know god you don't know about god or you don't know the voice of god nothing but how come you know the voice and let's look is then is abraham let's open a bible to genesis chapter 12 verses 1 And Genesis 12, 1, it says like this. Now the Lord had said to unto Abraham, Get you out of your country and from, every, uh, 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 and from your father's house and unto the land that I will show you. See now, God is, this is the first time Abraham having an encounter with God, having, you know, uh, hearing the voice of God first time and uh, he don't know God and uh, he has not heard the voice of God for the first time he is getting the voice and now we'll, let, let's ask Abraham how did he recognize the voice of God this is God speaking to me in, in these days we have different classes like uh, how to recognize the voice of God understand who is God is everything we have but those days in Abraham's day Abraham did that any classes you know but Abraham came to know this is God speaking this is God calling me and he started keeping his food friend and started walking and, and, and later on we call him as father of faith how did Abraham came to know this is God speaking immediately a voice came and telling Abraham go to the place I'm showing you how come how did he came to know this this was my question for so many days and I was praying and I felt in my spirit very clearly like you know uh, we ask like let, 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 let's ask Abraham Abraham how did you know God you don't know anything now you don't know about God but how did you came to know how did you recognize him he can say like this he might, it is not written in Bible but he, he might say like this uh, there are a lot of people in the world uh, and they know they don't know me but he here comes the words voice uh, calling me by my name Abraham go to the place I'm showing you amen so first point Abraham coming to know God as God know him amen number one point God is an omniscient God is a all-knowing God today morning I want to tell you to, to you my dear brother and sister God is telling to you I mean before you could know God God knew you amen before I could know God before I could call upon the name of God before I could seek the face of God God knew me that's why I'm standing here and preaching Amen. Because, because he knew you. That's why we are sitting here and worshipping this Jesus. Amen. God know us. Ask Abraham. Abraham says, nobody knew me. Nobody understands me. Nobody is there to care for me, love me. But here comes a voice telling Abraham. Voice calling by name. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verses 4 it says like this. Ephesians 1 4. 4. I mean, uh, before the foundations of the world. Ephesians 1 4 says according as he has chosen in him before the foundation of foundations of the world that he should be holy and without blame before him in love before the foundations of the world God saw us how many of you say amen for that amen, amen. see before the foundations of the world God knew us 
at least before god could put the cornerstone and you know, before he could you know prepare the ground for the foundation he, he had a plan of me in his mind amen in jeremiah 1:5 you know uh, bible very clearly says uh, before i was formed before you were formed in your mother's womb i saw you and called you as a prophet before we were formed in our mother's womb before we were conceived god knew us there are some people sitting over here i feel in my spirit very clearly i don't know who you are brother i don't know who your sister but the lord is telling to you very clearly people might don't know who you are and might might be telling like uh, you yeah, might be telling lord there is nobody to understand me i love people i care for people i do lot of things uh, but still in return i get pain i get a lot of uh, i mean you know kind of uh, disappointment why just kind of questions uh, some people are going through but the lord is telling to you my dear brother my dear sister if you know your god you are going to become stronger because you know that your god knows you amen amen more than anybody else in the world god knows you more than your father more than your mother more than your brother more than your sister more than your relatives more than your lover god knows you amen most of the time i sit alone and uh, though i do good ministry uh, i am not satisfied in what i am doing i wanted to do some more god anointed me at the age of 7 but still i still pray lord at the age of 5 or 4 if you would have anointed me you know, i could have done something great you know i used to, i was not satisfied i am praying and said lord nobody knows me nobody understands me this kind of question i was asking lord i was crying and crying and praying and nobody to help me you know taking me to this place or that place i was crying and immediately the lord said prashant people don't know who you are but i know who you are hallelujah hallelujah god knows you brother god knows you sister and how should you happy enjoying yourself and making people happy but deep inside you're going through a lot of trouble deep inside you're going through a lot of situations worries but the lord is telling he knows you my dear brother He knows you. He's a God who loves us. How many of you say, "Thank you, Jesus, for your love"? Thank you, Jesus, that you know me, Lord, more than anybody else in the world. You know me, Jesus. Amen. I was in my mother's womb. Mummy don't don't know who who was I, like in male or female. Now we have scanning on. You know, those days she didn't know who was me, like a male or female. But uh, you know, before she, I was conceived in my mummy's womb. God knew me. Hallelujah. that's why i'm happy i am at the point i can say is without the knowledge of god nothing happens to us amen because god knows if i eat my food on the rock or stone that is the knowledge of god without the knowledge of god I, I, nothing happens to me i was traveling to raipur for meeting uh, and we had a big crusade i was traveling in a train and i saw just one two years back many people covering their face you know nose with kerchief and anki they were covering their face i thought some dirty smell or something like that so even i thought i took cover. but for me nothing i i feel good good smell i took one anki and just to mark keeping like this and uh, i just slowly asked my friend who was coming with me hey brother what's wrong here every people are covering he said brother you know there is swine flu there's a sickness so you have to cover yourself you know virus will come and attack you so be careful and immediately i don't know my faith started increasing and this is my faith okay i took the anki i put it in my pocket I, he, my friend said why do you do that i said you know brother my faith is little different i know one thing god has called me god has anointed me and god has put a ministry in me and till my ministry ends till the ministry of god that is in me end no swine flu can touch me hallelujah hallelujah i mean god has anointed me and god has called me with a purpose still the assignment that god has given me finishes still it is finishes nothing not demon not discouragement not disappointment not satan no sickness can touch me because i am a child of god and god knows me hallelujah I mean I believe God is speaking to some people here you might going through fear oh god something might happen to me you know you might going through fear god is telling cast out that fear and increase your faith and say my god i know he is a god who knows me without the knowledge of god nothing is going to touch my body 
Amen. As I'm speaking this, I feel in my spirit uh, there are some allergies, skin allergies. God is healing right now. Shall I feel very clearly there are some people sitting over here having an allergy in, uh, in, in the body where you are unable to say it openly. Uh, come uh, in, in very clearly. God is telling, He's healing you. He's healing you. Only if you're receiving healing, clap your hands and just praise God and tell to God, Thank you, Lord, for healing the allergies in my body. Okay, praise God. Amen. God knows us. God knows us. And uh, in Psalms 139, David, uh, King David, he prays like this. I love the scripture very nice. Uh, Psalms 139. David is telling like this. Verses 1. Lord, you have searched me and known me. Verse 2. You know my down sitting and my uprising. You understand my thought from far. And everything he says in verse 7. Where shall I go from your spirit, Lord? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend up unto heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall the hand lead me, and the right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yet yeah, the darkness hide not from you, but the night shall shine the day shine as the day the darkness and the light are both like to you amen see david is telling lord from far you know me amen such a big god know who you are amen how many of you say god he knows me lord thank you lord for knowing me thank you lord for understanding me from far he knows you there are two sides i can say one thing he knows everything that you're doing though you do secret sin that also god knows because everything is naked in front of his eyes his eyes is blazing like a fire my dear brother my dear sister you're doing secret sin you're thinking that nobody's looking at me my brother my pastor nobody's knowing what i'm doing but god is telling you, he knows he's seeing you come back this is the right time for the for you to come back and tell lord forgive me lord i am unable to leave this bad scene but today god is going to deliver you how many of you say that god is going to deliver me amen knowing god god knows us david is telling everything you know when i'm sitting you're knowing and standing you know when i you know go there go here everything you know me you you know lord how many of you say thank you jesus that you know me first point abraham coming to know god as god know him that is omniscient god god is all knowing god amen number two i want to tell you god after giving after abraham coming to know god he started walking by faith first started walking because he knew without the knowledge of god nothing happens and verse two and three god giving a promises blessings first was chapter 12 verses 1 is a commandment Chap, uh, chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 that is a blessing first thing we have to obey the commandment then you will have a blessing Amen. Most of us, we go only for blessing. No, not only blessing. First thing, we have to obey the commandment. You know, Abraham obeyed the commandment. Go! He obeyed it. And second, he is getting the blessing. He is giving, God is giving a promises. Promises. What's the promise? The main promise God has given him. Main promise God given him. That is in Genesis chapter 17, verses 19. Let's open our Bible. In Genesis chapter 17, Verses 19, God is giving him a good promise. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac. Yeah? See, there is a promise of God giving to Abraham. God is giving a promise. Abraham, you will have a son called Isaac. You know, I think his age might be 99. Listen, everybody. His age might be 99, something like that. And in this old age, God is giving him a promise. Abraham, you will have a son. In these days, if God is giving a prophetic, uh, you know, message like this, you will have a son, something like that. We can't believe. For me, if God is telling me, Prashant, you will take a, you, will, you are going to buy a flight. You are going to purchase a flight, airplane. I will tell God, Lord, this is all false prophecy. <laughs> 
because i don't have cycle properly then how comes flight you know just this will be my question it's, it's limited for me everything is limited because my i am limited so i am limited my thoughts are limited but see in the life of jesus and abraham abraham had a faith you know abraham had a faith though he was uh, i mean uh, he, he, he god gave him he, though he was in old age god is telling to abraham you will have a son and abraham believed it amen he was not shaken he was strong and what happened in verse uh, chapter 22 uh, chapter 22 uh, chapter 21 sorry chapter 21 verses 3 there we see one thing and abraham called the name of his son and that was born unto him was isaac see in verse 21 chapter 20 uh, 17 god gave him a promise in verse, in chapter 21 god fulfilled the promises amen Amen. See, in this time Abraham coming to know God as first time God, Abraham came to know God as God is omniscient, he's all knowing God. Now second time Abraham is coming to know God as which was impossible was made possible. So he's coming to know my God is not only the all knowing God, is is El Shaddai, is almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See God is not only the God who is all knowing now he is coming to know my God is Jehovah is El Shaddai is almighty he makes impossible into possible amen it was impossible for him for Abraham it is impossible to accept it receive it but still he had faith that God can do it because without the knowledge of God nothing happens to him that was his faith that's why god pr- fulfilled the promises in uh, luke 145 it says uh, if you believe in what god said uh, is going to fulfill what he has said in uh, as isaiah i mean chapter 55 verses uh, uh, 9 and 10 it says like this uh, as rain and snow comes down and it never go back uh, it waters the earth and gives good fruits at season the same way is the word of god which come out from the word, mouth of god if it, it will never go void it it will accomplish the things uh, what the lord has said and then today the lord is telling if god has given you some promises some prophecies in your life uh, and just here god is going to fulfill it uh, believe that god is going to fulfill it amen last year is the year was uh, i mean sowing people sowed into you they they prophesied over you but today the lord is telling this year is the year of harvesting you're going to harvest the promises of god how many of you say you're going to harvest the promises the blessings of god so far you have not from even harvested so far you have not uh, harvested but today you're going to tell i'm going to harvest the blessings of god amen amen last year you got the promises prophecies everything big list is there in a big diary but this year you are going to say tick mark everything god fulfilled is a year of fulfillment amen abraham believed and god fulfilled see his faith started increasing one through first experience is coming to know god is all knowing second experience abraham coming to know god is almighty now third god is taking him till more testing area you know in chapter 22 god is telling abraham take his son begotten son loving son take him isaac and go to the mountain moria and there you have to offer him as a sacrifice for me you know most of us think abraham was scared he was like worried oh full tension you know abraham was not worried in my message i can understand in this message i can understand abraham was not worried because he know his god is strong amen if god is giving you some testing tell i am strong amen there is no gain somebody said like this there is no gain without pain and we cannot achieve greater things without sacrifice and if sacrifice or some some problems uh, some suffering if you if you are going to if you are going through god is telling it's only for a great blessing amen if there is a crucifixion there is a resurrection only if you say if there is a resurrection there is a glorification for you only if you say it's going to happen for me i believe there are some people sitting over here i am mean, going through kind of uh, 
crucifixion going through kind of uh, pain and struggles god is molding and preparing and breaking you for some extraordinary purpose don't tell your god it's enough it's enough oh oh lord it's enough why and don't ask this kind of question the lord is telling is preparing you for a greater use greater use the bangalore has not seen such a great thing that is going to happen from the short people's church and what i feel i i i i i, I strongly believe and i feel in my spirit only if you believe that you are going to be a part that god is going to use you in the days to come hallelujah hallelujah because you know your god that you are strong abram was strong he he took his isaac you know they even we read it you go to home and just read one by one you know it says it's very clear abram had a faith he's telling to his servant i will go and i will come back we will come back he's not still telling single word he's telling we will go we will come back it's like plural he's telling we go we come back it was his faith he's telling i will go with son i will come back with son because his faith was like this though i take isaac into mount moria i offer him as a sacrifice and if isaac become ashes if though isaac become ashes abram knew one thing previously god was almighty made impossible into possible and the belief god can make god can create another isaac from this ashes this was abram's faith amen in hebrew uh, 11 uh, 14 or 16 it says like this in hebrew uh, 11 19 sorry in hebrew 11 19 they very very clearly says uh, abram had faith he believed that god is going to bless him amen amen how many of you believe that god is going to do it for you abram believed one point god is knowing god he experienced he knew god through experience that is god is all knowing second abram knew god as god is almighty and third abram is coming to know god now is taking isaac to the mountain moria and there is i mean about to sacrifice isaac immediately the voice of god is saying abraham abraham don't you know sacrifice him and turn back he saw a lamb that was you know uh, lamb was in, in the bush and abram took it and called the name god is jehovah jaira a provider so far abram came to know that god is jehovah you know is almighty god i mean he is all knowing god but now in this experience abram coming to know god as god is jehovah jaira my provider how many of you believe that god is your provider man in every area god is a provider in my life also i can tell lot lot of testimony experiences how god provided for us i want to share only one testimony of how uh, god provided for us after my father's death uh, uh, we mummy me we three children came back to bangalore we were staying in a small uh, rented house as we were staying there one year my uncle uh, my mummy's brother uh, started helping us giving us one sack of rice and he, we used to take this one sack rice and put in a drum where my father uh, had brought before and in the drum inside we used to put just rice and uh and and after my uncle said he, you know, after one year he said i'm not going to help you enough sister i'm not going to help you uh, i'm going back i'm i'm doing my own job and i'm leaving you do whatever you wish he started shouting at mom and she he, he went off and uh, after one and one and a half month the rice in the drum was finished it was over empty and there was no rice uh, and uh, we were like very angry for 2 3 days we could not eat any food me my elder brother younger brother we were very, very, very angry and we wanted something something to eat i still remember my mummy uh, boiling water in cooker and uh, she takes that water in a glasses she prays and like she pray like this lord make this water as a compliment to my children lord a boost to my children is to pray this prayer and uh, she used to give to us and um, first day somehow we managed second day managed but third day uh, it was very tough morning we wake up, woke up uh, our body was like shivering legs and was shivering we wanted something to eat i mean it's in you know, our stomach was empty we want very hungry very very hungry and uh, if we could go to church and fiance people definitely they will help us but mummy said it is better to trust in god amen i mean it is better to trust in god those who trust in the god trust in the name of god shall be like a strong sea on we believed in uh, in god's word and we said god you are a provider and uh, that day by afternoon time my brother young 
younger brother was very angry what he did he went to the drum there was small two three rice grains no rice two three grains were there left over like he went inside he, he took that small small one two three grains and started eating it when we saw it we started crying and so we said lord why it's happening like this we we started praying immediately my mommy took the drum and kept in the hall i said all my uh, brothers come together children come together she started praying uh, join hands together and she started praying and i don't know the faith started increasing my mother said like this god you are the god of uh, a widow in the sarabath you blessed her and you provided for her you blessed this widow also and you are the god of elijah you provided for him and then provide for us also she started praying the faith started increasing she said like this a god you are the god who calls into existence which is not existed she started telling the rice is not there the grains are not there in jesus name i believe it is going to be here i mean she started calling into existence which is not existed she started speaking the word of god as she was speaking immediately somebody started knocking our door actually nobody comes to our house because if they come also there is no use nobody come but that day somebody is knocking tak 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 and uh, my mom went to open when, when she opened it uh, one uncle and aunty standing there and she said this is prashant's house uh, i said yeah i am prashant he, they came said oh brother that he came for a meeting in our house and he prayed for us and he said you will have a job and we got the job and we got the salary and we wanted to give just first salary as a tithe for you Amen. When I heard this, I was very happy, and immediately they said, "Brother, one minute, I will just come." And they both went down floor. Uh, we were staying in a up floor, uh, uh, first floor. They went down, and uh, from the car, they took one big sack of rice. Uh, I mean, provisions for two months, soap, that, this, everything, brought to our house uh, by the grace of God. We saw God called into existence, which is not existed. It is there. Hallelujah. from that day to day to day i tell you my dear brother and sister for god has provided for us amen from that day to today we are not lack hunger god has blessed us i mean bible says young lions lack hunger but those who seek the face of god will not lack anything is a god who blesses us amen such a great god is yours god my god how many of you say god is a god who loves us hallelujah he has blessed us today when i go to different parts of uh, india for preaching many pastors thing i'm very very vv vip they take us to some big big uh, five star hotels uh, and they make us to sit for having dinner and lunch some uh, ministers they ask us to have some dinner with them when i sit there and see the good good you know lunch and dinner i start uh, to cry tears comes out from my eyes and i ask god lord who oh, am i lord to give me such a good food lord amen even today i'm standing before you i'm preaching i should ask lord who oh, am i lord is a, such a great god is a god of love us is a provider if god can provide for prashant jones god can provide for you also only if you believe that god is a god who provide hallelujah if god can provide for abraham god can provide for you no your god your strong only if you're going to go and say lord i want to know you if you say god i want to know you more than yesterday only if you wanted to say god i want to know you I want to know you. As you lift your hands, I encourage you to stand on your feet for a few moments and tell to God, Lord, I want to know you, Jesus. I want to love you, Jesus. I want to experience your presence, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is moving in this place. Uh, I mean, uh, God wants to, I mean, uh, you know, reveal himself to you. How many of you say, God, I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to experience you. I want to experience your presence today morning. I want to be healed. I mean, so for you have not get got healing in your body i mean today you are going to understand that god is your healer rafa jehova the healer omni if you say yes god is my healer so far so far you are going through some financial crisis some financial problems believe is a provider is going to provide for you i mean if you are going through some kind of situations in your life believe god is going to do it for you but today i want to encourage you dear my dear brother i am mean, sister uncle auntie all my small friends god is telling to you i mean god is telling to you god is not only rafa jawa the healer when his eyes is blazing like a fire when is holding seven stars in his right hand when is holy when is all powerful when is almighty almighty god who is indescribable who is all powerful one who created the sun moon stars and everything in the world when is all 
holy, such a great and big God. He is our Father. And today morning, we as a child of God, standing in front of Father and telling to Daddy, Dad, bless us. How many of you are ready to say to, to tell to? How many of you are ready to say to your father, Daddy, I love you. I want to know you, Daddy. I want to love you, Daddy. Let us not be pleasers of man. Let us be pleasers of God. He's here. I, I, I can experience in him right now with this place. I can see. I, I, I see angels opening these places. If you want healing, if you want deliverance, uh, oh, God is going to touch you. I just encourage you all to close your eyes. If you feel like lifting up your hands and crying out, if you feel like uh, kneeling down and seeking the face of God, if you feel like walking around and telling Lord, I want to know you, I encourage you, church, go on with praising God. Tell to God, Lord, I want to know you.
a good hand. Lord, we just thank you. Good job. Good job. Why don't we just pray for him? Would you stretch your hand out towards this young man? Let's pray for him. Let's bless him. He has, he's a blessing to us and he goes out from among us, travels around the nation and he's soon getting ready to travel abroad as well. Do it. August. August, he'll be making his first international trip. He is proud of what God's doing in his life. Let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you for the gifts you give unto us, O oh Lord. And thank you for Prasant, the way you've raised him up and you're continuing to raise him up, Lord. We just want to be the family, that home where he could come, be renewed, be refreshed. Know that there are people who love him, who care for him, who cheer him on, who support him, who encourage him, who speak into his life, Lord. Father, we pray that you'll continue to take him far and wide across this land and in the nations of this world. Send him, Lord, to people who are hungry, who are needy, who are yearning to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Open up, Lord, supernatural doors and connections. Give him access, Lord, even into unreached territories and help him to cross, Lord, uncharted waters. And God, help him to go, Lord, to uh, unknown places even, God, with the message of Jesus Christ. But we also pray you'll continue, Lord, to raise him up and cause him, Lord, to speak into the lives of dignitaries and those in authority, God, so that they will bow their hearts and knees to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray you will continue to strengthen him in every way, increase what you're doing in him, increase your anointing, increase your revelation, increase Lord, you in him and him in you, 
increase it oh god we thank you for blessing his household and his brothers and his mother lord and we thank you that they will see no lack and they see your provision your hand of goodness on their lives and, and give them a hope and a future as well oh god we thank you father we bless for son in the name of jesus amen 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 god bless you for son amen amen Let's just get ready to close. Next Sunday, we have our Pastor Stephen Benny with us. Again, he's somebody who grew up in this house. I think he was with us about eight, nine years or so. And uh, I think it was earlier this year or sometime last year that he moved to Uti, taking up responsibility there. He'll be ministering to us next Sunday. We look forward to that. And uh, let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for ministering to our hearts in our lives. Thank you for the experiences of life that help us know you, facets of who you are and your greatness, Lord. I thank you that even as we know our God, we will be strong and do exploits. That cities and nations will be different because of our people who know their God and who do exploits. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. Lift up His confidence on you and give you His peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. And see you again next Sunday. Have a great week. Amen.